somebody besides you don't have one, please share with them, because I am going to be asking you to turn to at least one more scripture here in just a minute that I'd like for everybody to read. This morning, the book of Amos, chapter 4. The book of Amos, chapter 4. Some of you got derailed on your Bible reading way back January or February, and uh, you don't even know where Amos is. And you should have been there by now. Should have been in Amos by now. And so that would be uh, almost the end of the Old Testament. One of the last few prophet, prophetic books there is Amos, and we're looking at chapter number 4. Amos chapter number 4. You should know that this is in the Bible. Amos chapter 4 this morning. As I said, please share with them uh, this morning. This, as, the Lord, as the Lord would let me, I'll give you the message that he's laid upon my heart this morning. All right. I want you to look in your Bible, and you're going to know more than the Greenpeace environmental geologist, weatherman, and everything. You hear it on the news all the time. It's climate change affected by man. And it definitely is, only not the way they think. Their, their job is to put all their industry out of business and put the small companies out of business. That's the EPA's job. That's the environmental movement's mission is to put all the business out of America and bring America down and raise other countries up so we won't fuss and fight. And that'll never work. That'll never work. Man wants to run a business and he works hard. He ought to be able to do it. And, and he ought, there's always going to be rich and poor. There's always going to be different class people and, and you're not going to change that. You might as well just forget it and, do, and take what God said. Now I'm going to show you what the Bible says. Amos chapter 4 and verse number 7. Amos 4 and verse number 7. Look at the Bible. And also I have withholden the rain God said, when there were yet three months to the harvest, that would be August, September, October, November, the time we're in right now, and I caused it to rain upon one city and caused it not to rain upon another city. You know who did that? The Lord did. One piece was rained upon, and the piece whereupon it rained not withered. Everything dried up. So two or three cities wandered unto one city, to drink water. They're already talking about rationing water in the mountains right now. But they were not satisfied, yet have you not returned unto me, saith the Lord. I want to preach this morning on the subject, why no rain? Why no rain? We gathered to pray for rain this past Wednesday night. We all had a special prayer for it to rain. We did this morning in Sunday school for it to rain. The, the status of McDowell County, I'm not sure about Burke County, but McDowell County where I live, the status now is extreme drought. That's as bad as it gets. There now We are now in the worst drought in history for this part of the country since they began keeping record. Now, in the deserts and stuff, places like that, I mean, they go... Months and months and months, but that's why it's a desert. You heard about that fella said uh, he, he's out in the Arizona desert somewhere. It wasn't nothing but sand, and this couple come driving the road, and he was standing there and didn't have nothing on but his bathing suit, his bathing trunks. And they said, man, what are you doing? Uh, uh, he said, I'm going swimming. And they said, Lord, it's, it's 100 miles over across California uh, to the water. And he said, this is the biggest beach I've ever seen in my life. And uh, do you know why it's a, you know why it desert's a desert? Because it don't rain there. The Sahara Desert, I think, it's over three thousand miles, something like that, across it. They're saying now on the news that we need a hundred and eighty percent more rain and snow than normal this winter just to get caught up. And over in Asheville, this way, twenty-five inches of rain below normal. That's a lot of rain. That's, that's that deep of rain behind just to get caught up. They're thinking about water restrictions. The air quality is terrible. You can see smoke out in my yard. Uh, it's, uh, the rivers are low. Lake James over there, I don't know how many feet it is down, but it's way down. The creek that feeds our pond is just about dried up. Uh, we thousands of acres are on fire, 
and the government has declared a state of, uh, of emergency, or governor, uh, if he is still, I don't, last I heard he was still the governor, uh, on, in North Carolina, 47 counties are in a state of emergency. Now, I'm like you. You wonder, what in the world is this normal? No, it ain't normal. Why is it? So what I'm going to do this morning is I'm going to take the Bible and show you why it don't rain for a long period of time. It's not just coincidence. God does have something to do with the weather. Matter of fact, yeah, I've heard people say, well, we had a picnic plan. The devil made it. No, 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 no. Uh, God don't let the devil mess with the wet weather much. Maybe a little bit sometime. But he's in control. You've seen that scripture that I read. He said, I caused it to rain over here and not over there. Buddy, he cuts your water off for a while. He can get your attention real fast. It don't take long to do it without water to we're in trouble. Now, all right, three things I want to say to you this morning, and you will have a better education about this than the people on TV by far. Not because I say it, but because we know where the answer is. Number one, the beginning of rain. The beginning of rain. What is rain? Why is rain? Why, what is rain? Genesis 6 and verse 13, God told Noah, they said, the end of all flesh is at hand. He said, I'm going to bring a flood. In Genesis 2 and verse 5, the Bible said that before the flood, a mist come up out of the ground. It had never rained. That was over almost 1,700 years from Adam until Noah, right around the 2,000 year mark, a little less, that, that, it never, that it never rained. 2,300 B.C. It had never rained. So there were 1,700 years on the earth where a mist come up out of the ground and watered the earth, and there was this canopy over the earth. Things were a lot different then, a whole lot different. Because of that canopy around the, the earth, the sun's rays were filtered. Therefore, it was more healthy. There was more oxygen. The weather was better. And people lived to be seven, eight, and 900 years during that time. Uh, and, and there was no rain before there was ever rain. And so before the flood, there were no drops of water that fell out of the sky and fell on people. Now, this explains a lot of things. It explains one thing about dinosaurs. Dinosaurs were not here millions of years ago. The earth wasn't here millions of years ago. Uh, dinosaurs were in that period of those 2,000 years between Adam and Noah. And a, all a dinosaur is is a humongous reptile, lizard. And a lot of them wasn't even, wasn't even real that they've tried to reconstruct. Did you know that reptiles never quit growing? alligators, stuff like that. They just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So before the flood, if a man lived to be six and 700, then a, and you could have some mighty big lizards on, on this earth. And it won't take time to go into all of that. And then God told Noah, he said, Noah, build me an ark. Build you an ark. And he said, I want you to build us an ark. And he built this big old ark. That thing was long, three stories high. And it was big enough for uh, eight, thousand kinds of animals. One scientist said there's no way that Noah could have got two of every species in the world in that ark. And when they say that, they're showing their ignorance. God didn't say two of every species. He said two of every kind. And it was easy to get two of every kind. And they're like elephants. You didn't have to take a full grown one. You could have took little ones, little elephants. And they grow up and they're healthier and they don't eat as much. God added all They were vegetarians. Most animals were vegetarians also before the flood. The earth may have not been tilted on its axis so you didn't have froze north and south pole like we do. I'm not sure about that. That's maybe. But I know one thing. The atmosphere and the weather was way different before it ever rained the first time. Now God said in Genesis 7 and verse 4, I will cause it to rain 40 days and 40 nights. He said, Noah, everything's going to drown. I won't take time to go into all that, but the ark is reality. There is tons of evidence that the ark of Noah landed on the mountains of Ararat where the Bible said over there east of Turkey or somewhere over there of Ararat and there is lots of evidence that it is still there. Uh, 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 it's been spotted. They've been spotted way up there on top of that town and at the bottom of that ark mountain they say that's the oldest town in the world and they say the place where the ark landed, the place where the boat stayed. 
And so there's lots of evidence. All right, you know, there's Noah's Ark in the Bible, and then there's the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was just a smaller thing that they kept the Ten Commandments and Noah's rod that budded and some of the manna. And the children of Israel carried that with them 40 years in the wilderness. One man said, uh, this one man said, uh, uh, he said, now look, you about got me convinced that Noah built that big old ark, but you ain't going to get me to believe they carried that thing around the wilderness no 40 years. Uh, he had the wrong ark. Uh, uh, Noah's ark was huge. They didn't even go back and carry it nowhere. And God said, it's going to rain. And he said, Noah, you pitch it within and without with pitch. Pitch is like waterproof or like tar. And he said, pitch it inside and outside. It's going to rain, buddy, and it's going to rain hard. 40 days and 40 nights. Was it a universal flood? Yes, sir. Absolutely. You know, there's enough water. If all the glaciers melted, there's enough water on the earth right now. If the mountains were down, the earth was a ball, and the bottoms of the, of the ocean were up just as all to cover it 8,000 feet all the way around. So there's plenty enough water. You say, people say, well, where'd all that water go? It's still here. Uh, there's this crater down in the bottom of the ocean, and then the frozen caps, and what's up in the clouds, they're still there. God ain't made more water. There's plenty of it. Of, uh, it just recirculates. Water recirculates. That water you drunk this morning, Hitler might have drunk that water. Or Pharaoh. I mean, and it's refilled. That's a terrible thought, isn't it? Uh, it's, it's recycled through the earth, comes up in the springs and runs down the mountain. Then it goes out in the ocean in the salt water. God picks salt out there so it won't freeze. And then it evaporates with the sun and the clouds come over the wa uh, mountain and drops it down again. And it just goes around and around and around like that. And so that's where the water comes from. The, that's, why, that's why these mountains, anytime you go to the mountains, you see rocks like that right there. And there's another layer and another layer. They're not straight. They're up like that. Something pushed them things up there. And the world everywhere shows evidence of a worldwide flood. Uh, the Grand Canyon is a perfect example. That little bitty river didn't carve out that Grand Canyon. Man, that thing mile across there. And, buddy, that, there was a flood, and it washed out. The dam broke, and all that went down through there somewhere and out into the Pacific Ocean. And that's how the Grand Canyon got there. So God said the beginning of rain was this. They actually, uh, by the way, that's why there's fossils. That's how coal got in the mountains of West Virginia. See how them mountains up there? Pressure. Isn't that, that coal? Uh, uh, and uh, fossils and uh, layers of rock and oil in the ground. That's how it all got here, in the flood. The oldest tree in the world they say is about 5, 000, less than 5,000 years old. Corresponds perfect. 4,400 years ago, the flood. The, the only uh, earliest records of mankind, farming, any kind of written records, don't go back past uh, 4,000 B.C., back before the time of the flood. There was nothing wrote down until then. So you're all right believing the Bible. Don't ever be afraid or intimidated or scared to say, well, I don't know if I want to really believe the Bible or not because science says you're never wrong by taking what God said. In that book, God never missed it one time. That book is the Word of God. Heaven and earth will pass away, but that Word will stand forever. So that was the beginning of rain. And the day that Noah got in that ark, the Bible said two and two, two and two, two and two, two and two, two and two. Fish didn't have to get in. They could swim. And they stayed out there in the waters and and. and Water animals, uh, insects were in crevices and cracks and places, and the sea to them made it through the flood. The big animals got on the boat, and brother, the Bible said God shut him in. And notice what happened. Water just didn't fall out of the sky. Water didn't, it wasn't, the flood wasn't just big clouds come up and water came down. The Bible said the fountains of the great deep were opened up. And so the ground heaved and cracked, and there's cracks, just like a seam on a baseball, there's cracks in the earth crust all the way around it, under the ocean, and water came just squirting up out of, that, out of that ground. You talk about a tidal wave, you talk about a tsunami, it'd be like a 100-foot tidal wave come down through Morganton, there wouldn't be nothing left here. This building would be gone. There wouldn't be nothing left here but a big old crater, and that's why when you go travel out in the mountains in Montana and Colorado, and, and see the deserts in place, you see the evidence of a flood. It's evident. I mean, it's right in front of your face. The only way you couldn't believe in that is if you don't want to. 
And there's where the problem comes in. But anyway, that water came down. And it got to the ankles and it got to the tree. And those animals were running to the high places to try to get away from that flood. And that's why you've got fossils of animals. There are certain kinds of, of uh, animals that whose uh, who's, uh, thing runs up on their back only when they're scared and there's thousands of them, bang, in rock straight up. And, buddy, you know what that means? Them animals are all right there and all died at the same moment. And you don't date the rocks by the fossils and the fossils by the rocks. That's false. You date it all by what the Bible said. You never have to worry about that. So that's the beginning of rain. So the first time it ever rained, it was punishment to drown the world. God said he'd never do that again. Now, number two. Let's talk about the withholding of a rain. Too much rain is a problem, as we just got through talking about, and not enough is a problem. That's why it comes a drought. There are many, listen to me, many, many instances in the Bible, they all have a Jewish context in the Old Testament, but we can take a lesson from them, but where God withheld the rain. I am not saying that it ain't rained here in the last 90 days because God's judging. I'm not saying that, but I ain't saying he ain't neither. Maybe the Bible Belt does need a slap a little bit. Maybe we have took God's blessings around this part of the country too much and too long. I don't know. I'm going to tell you what the book says, though. I want you to take your Bible and turn to 1 Kings chapter 8. Take your Bible and turn to 1 Kings chapter number 8. Did you read your Bible this year? Well, maybe you need to, buddy. Maybe you need to. You got the answer to every problem you'll ever have right there in that book in your lap, and the devil's the one that makes you ignore it. Look at 1 Kings chapter 8, and let's look at verse number 35. I, I don't know what others may say or believe, but I'm telling you I'm going to stick with what that book says right there that's never been proved wrong one time. 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 35. Everybody looking at it? It says this. When heaven is shut up, that there is no rain. Why? Because they have sinned against thee. You, don't, you ain't going to get it no plainer than that. If they pray toward this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin, when thou afflictest them, then hear from heaven, forgive their sin, all of that, and then he's going to let it rain. Verse 36 said he let it rain. So in the Bible, there is no doubt about it God dealt with Israel if they turned from him and they worshipped other gods and they got full of the devil, God said, I'll hold rain back. And if you repent and get right, I'll let it rain. That's what he did. You can't argue with that. People say, well, God don't, he sure does. He does, he did. He held it back because people we're living in sin. It says the same thing in 2 Chronicles 6, 26. You don't have to turn to it. It said in 1 Samuel 12, 18, God sent thunder and rain as a punishment. And in 1 Kings 17, 1, the Bible said Elijah prayed and God didn't let it rain for three and a half years and the brook dried up. The brook dried up, the streams and the river dried up. You know why? People worshiping idols and false gods. I know, I know. They say, oh, you preachers, I know how y'all are. Everything that happens, you connect it with God. You're absolutely right. He's a sovereign God. He's running the universe. He says what happens and what don't happen. I wouldn't get too big for my britches if I was you. You're just a little bitty speck down here on this earth. He's the one that's running things, buddy. He's the one that's calling the shot. You you know when it snows? When God says snow. You know what El Nino has to do with it? Nothing. He's in control of that. He's in control of how cold it gets, how hot it gets. He's in control of the, the rain, the, the thunder, the lightning, every bit of it. Well, I believe man can, man, little bitty peewee, I don't think so. I think, brother, God's in control like the book said. God said, I caused it to rain here and not there. Now, the eastern part of our state was flooded not long ago. Still is. A lot of, they're soaking wet. We're parched dry. Uh, you say, well, you're trying to hook up God and everything. Yeah, and you're trying to unhook him and everything. And I'm right. I'm right. God does have something to do with that. Oh, you people, you just try to read the Bible in there. You're, you're guilty, guilty, and thank God for it. I do read the Bible and everything. And you're uneducated spiritually if you don't. I'm telling you, brother, you know, who, you know when it's going to rain? 
when God says so. Amen. And they say we might get some hope so. Thank God, I hope it does. But not until he says rain, it ain't going to rain. All right? Now, the Bible said in Matthew 5, it rains on the just and the unjust. People say, well, see, that couldn't be the judgment of God. What about old grandma? She's living right, and she's having to suffer. What about so-and-so? He's full of the devil, and it rains over here. It rains on the just and the unjust. That's what Jesus said. He's, God's good to everybody. God's good to people that hate him. It rains on the just and on the unjust. But once in a while, he holds it back. Number three. You do realize that during the tribulation, there will be a repeat of Elijah's prophecy. The last three and a half years of tribulation will be a drought. Elijah, one of the two witnesses in Revelation 11, smite the earth that it might not rain in the days of their prophecy. Prophecy, 42 months. That's three and a half years. So the last three and a half years will be a repeat of Elijah's drought back in the Old Testament. And there's, full of, there's all kinds of scriptures that talks about a flood being at the end of the tribulation, right before the millennial reign. A great flood, then God's going to burn the world up like I preached last Sunday. Ladies and gentlemen, number three, and I'll be through. Here's the part I want to get to this morning, and I'll let you go. The typology of rain. I said the beginning of rain... Genesis 6, the withholding of rain, Amos 4, 2 Chronicles 6.26, 2 Kings 8.35, Matthew 5.45, 1 Kings 17.1. It's all through the Bible. Finally, the typology of rain. Since we are Gentiles, saved Christians in the body of Christ, in the age of grace, New Testament Christians, what does this mean to us? A lot of times God dealt with Israel in different ways than he deals with the church. So in typology, what's typology? If rain out there, what it's a picture of when it rains? I'll give it to you. Ezekiel 34, 26 said, There shall be showers, shower of blessing. We've all heard showers of blessings, showers of blessing, showers of blessing we plead. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. So showers of rain. When it thunders and lightnings and gets a terrible storm, you think, oh my goodness, the Lord must be. Sometimes he does that. But pretty steady rain making the crops grow, watering the grass, filling up our ponds and lakes and rivers and streams. Pretty rain like that is a picture of blessings in the Bible. That's why when he withholds the blessings when you sin, he gives the blessings when you get right. So if rain in the Bible... If God dealt with people in the Old Testament, I'll send the rain when you're right. I'll hold it back when you're wrong. Typology would say God blesses our life when we're right with God and God holds back blessings when we rebel against Him and not do right. That's as straight and plain as level as you can hear it right there. Typology, rain is a picture of God's blessings. Now we're going to look at it spiritually. Old Brother Carl Lackey, old Pat, preacher up in Mount Airy, North Carolina, preached for years and years and years. He's dead and gone now. I, I preached for him a few times up there at White Plains Baptist Church in Mount Airy. And old Brother Lackey, he come and preach for us one time years ago, and his title of his message was, It Ain't Gonna Rain No More. And the whole thing was, You're not living right, so God's going to hold back the rain. He wasn't talking about water. He's talking about his blessings. His blessings. And he, the whole message was, It Ain't Gonna Rain at Your House. Because you ain't right with God. It ain't going to rain. He wasn't talking about water. He's talking about blessings on your life. We're going to spiritualize it here before we go. That a song. Y'all sing that, heard that song they're singing now? I, I, I wish we'd sing it here. Send the rain. Send the flood. Send the flood. Send the rain. Send the fire. Amen. Hey, you know what? Send the Holy Ghost and fire. You know what that song's saying? Lord, we're dry. Most churches are dry as cracker, brother, uh, spiritually. Amen. We need the rain. We need the rain. We need the rain. And what God's doing out there in a spiritual drought with fires burning up our assets is a picture of what's going on spiritually in the average church this morning. 
You know as well as I know, the average church member, the blessings are cut off from your life. You remember when God was blessing you? You remember when you could just pray and get an answer? You remember when you felt right with God? You remember when you wanted to read the Bible? You remember when the blessings were coming at your house? You know why the blessings ain't coming? You won't read your Bible. You won't pray. You won't do it. Hey, I'll I'll throw something at you. I didn't write this. I'm just going to tell you. You know what the old timers used to say? When it didn't rain for a while, you know what old people used to say? People say they ain't paying their tithes. That's what they used to say. You say, oh, them old crazy old people, they might not have been as crazy as we think they are. Maybe God is talking to the Bible Belt. Maybe we have got time. We talk about them low-down, wicked people in California. Yeah, but what about our sin? What about your sin? What about my sin? Don't worry about them people in California. If you don't even pay your tithes and you don't pray and you don't read your Bible and you're not right with God, that'll stop the blessings from coming in your life. Amen. The Bible, you said, that ain't in the New Testament. It is too done it. He said, if we ask of him, we receive of him. If we do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Your lifestyle does have something to do with the blessings of God on your life. Now, don't you salvation. Salvation is a gift. You receive Christ. You're saved. Nothing to can be put to it. Nothing can be taken away with it. But the life that you live will largely determine the blessings of God or the lack of blessings of God on your life. You know that's true. Say amen. Amen, brother. Amen. I don't know about you, but I got up this morning. I read my Bible. I prayed. I put my part of my money and extra in the offering plate. And I'm telling you, I, don't, I want the blessings on my life. I don't want God to withhold the rain in my heart and life. He is able to get your attention. There's a man in the Bible in Luke chapter 15. You can read about him. He's called the prodigal son. And the prodigal son was in his father's house. He had it made. When I preach that story, I preach it like uh, the Cartwrights. And I have Ben and little Joe and Hoss and, and, uh, and I picture the one rebellious son and I'll make him little Joe, and he'll go out there, and he goes out. He said, I'm tired of living by your rules. I want to do what I want to do. I'm, I'm out of here. He gets his inheritance. He goes down there and starts getting drunk and smoking pot and everything else and starts living wicked and everything. And boy, I tell you, you know what the Lord did? He held the blessings back. And that old prodigal son got broke. He got broke, absolutely broke. You do know if you're a Christian, if you don't live right, God can take away what you've got. You know that, don't you? And buddy, he lost everything he had. You can lose everything you've got in five minutes. You say, preacher, God wouldn't do that. All right, oh yeah. If you won't willingly do right, he'll fix it to work. I'm, I'm talking from experience. I've done wrong before. You know what the Lord done? He smacked my head off. He'll do it because He loves you. And thank God He does love us enough to do that. My advice to you is, you better get right and stay right. You say, oh, you think God's mean and bad. God is strong. God does still hate sin. God does still judge sin. I'm telling you this morning, the typology of rain is God withholds the blessings from our life. Some of y'all in a spiritual drought. You ain't felt God in so long. You don't even remember how long it's been. You just come to church just because you, so your wife won't fuss at you or because your husband or your daddy makes you or your mama fusses if you don't. That's the only reason you're here today. It's been so long since you had a blessing. Just showers of blessing. You're dry. You're dry spiritually. I'm telling you the, the world looks good to you and the church looks bad. I, you're like, you're selfish. All you think about is yourself. I said to this girl one time, they said, uh, they said, why don't you just um, quit being selfish in your prayers? Because she's praying for her husband, praying for her husband. And then somebody said, why don't you quit being selfish and just ask for God's will to be done? She said, okay, I'll pray for others. God, would you send my mother a son-in-law? That's the way people are. It's always self. Ain't that right? I don't know if you're asleep or dumb or just can't keep up with me or what, but for the rest of you, we've got to move on. I, I'm telling you something, brother. Listen, when the, you know what the prodigal son did? He got down there, and he lost everything he had. No more blessings, no more money, no more parties, no more liquor, no more dope, no more big time, no more girlfriend, no more. He hit the bottom. God smacked him. Molly, 
tell me that, you know, these, these kids, you forget what, I forgot what having kids, little kids is like, Molly, she'll, she'll crack up some things she said. We sing, we sing all the way to church, and all the way back to church, and we, we didn't take, we take them uh, foster parent classes, Lord, whoever in the world wrote that junk was bored or something, uh, but anyway, uh, my, 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 she sings all the way to church and all the way back, and she sings church songs. And she, you know how kids will do that? Kids do that a lot. They get it wrong, but get it right. She's saying, oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him. She got all that right. And all my love is due him. He punched me to victory. And Kelly was like me. I said, no, that's right. The Lord's punched me to victory a time or two. Ain't he you? You know what the Lord does if you have to? He'll punch you to victory. Bam! You won't live right okay? I'll punch you to victory. <laughs> Amen. He punched me to victory. Uh, Amen. All my love is due him. Thank God that he does. Hey, hadn't you had to punch your kids to victory a couple, once in a while? I don't mean in the face. Don't, don't let that be on the Internet, please. I didn't mean that. A good, a good biblical spanking in the right place. That's what I meant. But I'm telling you, he's punched me to victory. Oh, you ain't going to get right, Danny? Well, yeah, I'll, I will, Lord, not today. Uh, you going to get right, Danny? Oh, well, I'm not. He punched me to victory. You're down and goes, oh, Lord, I'm sorry. Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. Then the rain comes. Then the rain comes. Listen. I had rather have those showers of blessings on my life, spiritual rain, and my family be happy and right with God than everything this world's got to offer. The typology of rain. Is he going to have to punch you to victory? You better think about it. You better think about it. It's taught throughout the Bible. Listen. I hope it rains tomorrow. I'm praying. I'm praying. Do you know when it's going to rain? When God says so. That's right. Well, they're saying, yeah, I know. I hope they're right. And I'm not saying he withheld it because of anything. I'm not. But I ain't saying he didn't either. In typology, it's a picture of him holding back his blessings off your life. I knew a man one time, a good man, loved the Lord, and he got... He just got backslid. That's all there is to it. He got backslid. He's a deacon in a church. And he just got cold, got to where he didn't come to church regular, quit reading his Bible. And about a year later, he got back in there and really got on fire. And I asked him, I said, man, how would you do that? Because a lot of people just come to the altar, go right back, come to the altar, go right back. He said, you know what I had to do, Brother Danny? He said, I had to make myself read my Bible and pray till the blessings come back on my life. When you get like that, when you realize you're in a drought, and it's been a long time since it's rained in your life, you know, it's in the rain. I mean, it's been so long since you got a blessing, maybe you just need to make yourself. I, that's why I push you to read the Bible. If you, if, you don't, if you don't make yourself do it, you won't do it. Carrie texts me every now and then, where you at? Where you at? She's trying to keep up with me. I'm, I'm going to be finishing right on time if it's God's will. Many of you have already finished. You have, to, you have to make yourself. Sometimes you have to make yourself quit doing stuff you shouldn't do. If you know it's wrong, if you've got a brain in your head, you'll make yourself quit. Or if you don't, he'll make it for you. If you're his child and you don't quit doing something wrong, he'll quit you. He'll quit, you for, he'll quit it for you. It's a whole lot easier to just quit it yourself. That's why there's no rain. How long has it been since it rained in your life? I'm not talking about water. That's just a picture of what so many people are going through spiritually. Let's stand. Bow our heads for prayer.